Hey guys, today I am going to explain why Alpha Investment does not sue Wizards of the Coast, even though he's very angry at them. Uh, the claim would be over the reserve list. So the reserve list, obviously the 30th anniversary, is a direct reprint. And we know this because Merrill has said in the past exactly, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but we will not reprint cards with different backs or the same back. This is clearly a reprint with a different back. People call it a proxy and so on, but I don't think anyone can argue it is a reprint, right? You put it in the sleeve, it's ready to go. That was the purpose of it. And if you don't believe me, well then, why is the price point $1,000? <laughs> I mean, the price point at $1,000 indicates that they believe that this is a reprint, otherwise it would be a much, much cheaper product, right? So you might ask, okay, Alpha Investments has all these reserve list cards and you know, blah, blah, blah. Why does not he not, he makes multiple videos about the reserve list being cracked and so on. These are among his most popular videos. Why does Alpha Investment not sue Wizard of Coast? It probably costs him $400 to file the fees in Florida from what I can do, I, I can understand. And there would at least be worth it in terms of the entertainment value, in terms of the, um, ability to make content from this because it would be very intriguing content what the argues would be arguments would be i'm sure he could find a lawyer who would do it pro bono for him you know one of these lemming lawyers right and the reason he cannot sue him because there's no case i've said this a million times i will say this a million and one times today you sue because you believe you can win the fact that all these people are so angered, hundreds of thousands of people watching these videos are so angry about this reprinted proxy product. They're so angry and there's not one person, there's not one person willing to spend the $300, $400, the cost of a, a non-blue dual land to sue. That should tell you how strong this case is. Um, in cases in the past history, like the Magic Judges, they sued. Uh, because they thought they were employees. Again, they lost, but it was a reasonable case in my opinion. Uh, this is not a reasonable case. The reserve list, you need to have consideration for a contract. So promissory estoppel, it's basically contract law 101. It's what you learn the first year of law school. Contracts, I'm trying to remember, was it first semester or second? I think it was second semester, yep. Yep, actually, now I think about it. Nope, 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 nope. It was first semester. Nope, could be second. But the first year of law school, everyone learns contract law, be it the first or second semester, which I'm not remembering right now. And one of the things that you have to do is you need two parties agree on something and give consideration in towards that agreement. So if one party is going to like just say, hey, take this boat. I don't want anything in return. It's not really a contract, that's a gift. Right, that's a gift. Um, consideration would be even a dollar. Even a dollar for that boat would be consideration. And now you have an agreement to sell the boat for a dollar. So contract law really depends on the consideration of what we as the players gave to Wizard of the Coast. Maybe it was that we would buy cards or continue to play. But who was the party that was actually representing us at the time? And the answer is, Nobody. So in marketing law, there's something called puffery, which means that you can state things that are a little bit uh, hyper real. Uh, when I mean hyper real, I mean like it's like a little crazy, you know, these crazy advertisements you see all the time. Uh, they are legal because puffery is allowed sometimes in marketing uh, to an extent. We don't push the boundaries too much. And in my opinion, this is just a marketing ploy. Right? So if the idea is our players are leaving, we want them to stay, what can we say to get them to stay? Oh, we're gonna create this reserve list. Your cards will have value on a secondary market. We'll never reprint them again. That to me is more marketing than it is legal. So you can have an oral contract that is legally binding, but like I said, there's gotta be some type of consideration the marketing component, this just sounds like marketing to me, that like this is why you should buy our products because we won't reprint them. And many of these products were coming out. So buy the new set 
in this new set, there will be cards where will never reprint and therefore you will have some type of value saved in those cards. It's just a way to manipulate the secondary market. It's not a contract, like it's not for the players. It's for magic to make more money. It always was. Um, and this is why I think even if some people did decide, hey man, maybe we should sue for the PR, for the content, for the, you know, there's a lot of YouTubers who would really benefit from suing Wizards of the Coast and just tracking the progress of it, especially with the amount of people angry at Wizards of the Coast today. None of them will do it because even if they did see a lawyer under free consulting, I guess, the lawyer would say, nah, man, we can't win this. And you might think, why does it matter? A, a lawyer, if they continue to do frivolous lawsuits, lawsuits where it doesn't have a chance of winning, they can get disbarred. So as a lawyer, you don't want to do a, so it's, it's two parts. I don't think there's a Rudy Chan or somebody like that who's willing to sue and fund it. Um, no matter how many reserve list cards they have, I don't think there's anyone who is gonna fund it. Then, I mean, Rudy Chan knows what's happening next. Next year, we might have a reprint, which is actually a with the correct back. And the reason we'll have that is because what else can you do? Like you, you, I mean, you've kind of, it's kind of like we have resources and we've already used all of them. And the only resource we have left is reprinting the Power Nine, reprinting dual lands and so on. So number one, I don't think there's a party like a Rudy on Alpha Investment. I don't think anyone would ever take everyone be the party to the case. And number two, I don't think any lawyer would ever represent the case because to me, it is borderline frivolous lawsuit and really, truly, you shouldn't be pursuing, you know, this type of lawsuit unless like you really have a good argument. Um, it might not even last summary judgment, by the way, I think the argument would go. So in my opinion, that's why Rudy Chan won't sue because it's a loser case. I mean, if you want to prove me wrong, prove me wrong. It costs less than $400 to file, at least here in Houston. Bye guys. And you don't need a lawyer, lawyer to file, by the way.